Hi, this is Mark from Roadhawk and today we're going to have a look at the Roadhawk HD software. First thing you're going to want to do before you install the software is to go out and take some video with your camera. The software won't work unless you have video on the SD card. In the box of the Roadhawk HD you'll find a CD-ROM and on the CD-ROM you'll find the installation files for the software. It's compatible with both Mac and PC. If you have a computer that doesn't have a CD-ROM drive, just navigate to our website locate the Roadhawk HD camera, click on the software tab and you'll find links there where you can download the latest version of the Roadhawk HD software. Once you've installed the Roadhawk player double click the icon and you'll be presented with this screen. As soon as you put the SD card into the computer the software will show you all the files that are on your SD card. Now by default the camera is set up in dash cam mode so it will make lots of one minute video files and when the SD card is full it will start overwriting itself. A Roadhawk makes two different types of files. It makes normal video files which is your everyday normal driving and it also makes what we call an event file. So this file at the top here with the exclamation mark is an event file. This is created when the camera detects some kind of g-force like an accident or it could be a pothole. You can also trigger the camera into creating an event file by pressing the E button on the back of the camera. Now these three buttons at the top of the screen here, they will determine what is listed down here to show you the files that are on the SD card. So by clicking all by default that shows you all of your files. Clicking normal, it shows you all of your normal video files. And clicking event will list only the event files that are on the SD card. Now, as you can see, I've been quite lucky. I've not been in any accidents recently, but we'll have a look at this file here. I saw this along the motorway the other day, and I triggered this file by pressing the E button on the back of the camera. And what that does is that stores that one minute file in a separate location on the SD card, so you can easily find it later. I'll explain that a little bit later on. So the other things we can see on this screen here, these are your transport controls. This is how you control the video and you can skip around the video by dragging this bar along. This here is the volume of the video. Down here we've got the speed of the vehicle at the current time of playing the video and you can change that to kilometers by clicking just here. Change it back. Here we have data from the accelerometer so this shows the g-forces that are experienced by the camera at the time of recording the video and that's shown in graphical form here and in text form here. Along here you have the map and we can zoom in and we can change it to satellite mode and see exactly where the vehicle was at the time of recording. Now the map is pulled from the internet so if the computer is not connected to the internet you won't see a map here, it will just be a blank screen. By clicking on the spanner icon in the top right hand corner of the software you can bring up the settings for the camera. These are the default settings for the camera as it comes out of the box. The first setting resolution you can choose between 720p or 1080p. At 1080p you'll get a bigger picture and a higher quality video but you'll get less video on the SD card. If you're recording at 720p you can choose between 60 or 30 frames per second. At 60 frames per second you'll have smoother looking video but you'll get less video on your SD card. Time zone. The camera captures time and date from GPS satellites. As soon as it gets a GPS lock the camera will know what the time is but you still have to tell it which part of the world you're in. File length. This determines how long the file is before the camera starts making a new file. Loop. With loop mode on, when the SD card is full, the camera will start overwriting the earliest files and carry on until the camera is turned off. For loop mode to work, you have to have the file length set to one minute. If the file length is set to anything more than one minute, loop mode will be turned off. Mic sensitivity. This is the volume of the microphone inside the camera, so if you've got quite a loud car and you're getting distorted audio, you can lower this setting. If it's quiet in your car and you want to capture talking, then just bring this setting up a little bit. You may want to experiment with this setting. Speaker volume. This is the internal speaker of the camera. When you turn the camera on and it tells you it's working, or if it wants to let you know that there's a problem with the SD card, this controls the volume of that speaker. Event sensitivity. This is the sensitivity of the accelerometer inside the camera. With a higher sensitivity, the camera is more likely to create event files, say if you go over a pothole. 
If you find you're creating a lot of event files, then drop that down to a lower sensitivity. But remember, if the sensitivity is too low and you have a small accident, the camera may not trigger an event. If the camera doesn't trigger an event and you carry on driving, there is a chance that video could be over recorded. Contrast. This changes the image quality. Contrast is the difference between the dark parts of the video and the light parts of the video. Brightness. This controls the brightness of the camera. If you're doing a lot of nighttime driving, you may want to bring this up a few notches. Saturation. That's basically how much color there is in the picture. The lower the saturation, the less color. Bitrate. The higher the bitrate, the higher the video quality. Setting the camera to 12 megabits per second will use around about 6 gigabytes of data per hour. So the higher the video bitrate, the less video you'll get on the SD card. Record mode. You can choose between either normal or normal and event. In normal mode, the camera will use 100% of the available space on the SD card for video, but the camera will not create event files. If you select this to normal plus event, the camera has to be in one minute file mode. Normal plus event divides the card into two parts. 60% is portioned for normal video and 40% is proportioned for event video files. Once that 60% is full, the camera will loop over itself and start overwriting the earliest video files. If the camera detects an event, detects an event. that one minute file will be saved in the event portion of the SD card. The camera will continue to record in normal loop mode. After some time, the event portion of the SD card will also become full. At this point, it will also overwrite the earliest event files. If your camera is making a lot of events each day, you may want to adjust the event sensitivity in the software. Because of the way the camera divides the SD card into two parts, changing the record mode will always prompt you to erase all the files on the SD card. But remember, make sure you don't have any files that you want to keep on this card because once you've deleted them, you won't be able to get them back. Spot metering tells the camera how to measure the light coming in so it can set its exposure levels. If you've got the camera set far back in the car and you find that the outside is being overexposed, turn spot metering on. This will tell the camera to measure the light from the middle of the picture rather than around the edges and it will correct overexposure. Timestamp. The timestamp is shown in the bottom right hand corner of the video. If you're using Roadhawk HD as a dash camera and you might need to use the video for evidential purposes, leave the timestamp turned on. To apply the settings to the camera, press the submit button. This will write a file to the SD card and when the SD card is next used in the camera, the camera will apply those settings. It's useful to note that if you use more than one SD card, you could have multiple settings on each SD card. Default settings. If you get a bit lost and you're not quite sure what you've done, press load defaults. This will set the camera up as it was out of the box when it came from the factory. If you've captured some video on your Roadhawk and you want to save it to your computer, the first thing to do is take a note of the file name. Navigate to the SD card on your computer and double click the DCIM folder and the 100 media folder and all the files from the Roadhawk HD camera are kept here. To copy the file from the SD card onto your computer, simply click and drag onto your desktop. Once the file has been copied to your computer, you can double click it to play it in Windows Media Player. Now that you've got your video stored on your computer, how do you show it to other people? Well, one of the easiest ways would be to upload it to YouTube. The Roadhawk HD makes standard video files, so to upload to YouTube, simply click on the upload button and drag the file and watch it upload. To make it easy for other people to see, don't forget to call the video Roadhawk and tag the file with the Roadhawk name as well. If you want to make the video private so other people can't see it, just click private here. Another way to share your video is by using Facebook. Log on to your page, find the upload photos video link and then navigate to your video, double click and watch it upload. 
You can also tag Roadhawk so we can see it too. Don't forget to like the Facebook page to keep up with special offers and view other people's videos. If you have a file that you want to send to your insurance company, the file is too big to email, so we recommend using a web service called WeTransfer. Go to wetransfer.com. When you see this screen, click on Add Files. Locate the file that you want to send and click Open. Put in the email address of the person you want to send it to here. Put your email address in here and click on Transfer. Once the file is uploaded, your recipient will receive an email and they can click on the email to download your video. If you hear this warning from your camera, 99% of the time that means there is a problem with your SD card. Possible causes for this might be the SD card is too slow. Use only Class 10 branded cards and use cards that we recommend only. There are a lot of fake cards going around. Try to avoid buying cheap cards from auction sites. And the other reason you may get this error is if the card has been corrupt. Because of the way the camera reads and writes files all day long, especially if you do a lot of driving, the card may eventually become corrupt. If this happens, format your SD card. If you want to know how to format your SD card, have a look at our other videos. The Rodork HD is more than just a high-end dash camera. We also designed it for motorsports use. So if you do racing or track days, have a look at our other videos and see what you can do with this camera. Thanks for listening and if you have any more questions, just contact us through our website www.roadhawk.co.uk.